So, you know, <clears throat> a few uh, few weeks ago, I did a podcast for my Fight, Laugh, Feast Network show. And on the podcast, I, I basically made the argument that I think that people that support the Democratic Party in the church should be church disciplined in most cases. And I realize that that is a extreme position, um, and I am not backing down on that at all. In fact, I am very happy to, to say that I've seen this idea, and I'm not crediting myself with it, of course, but I've seen this idea start to gain traction in the recent weeks. And I think it's, um, it's a result of just sort of the absolute powerful work that God has done in revealing Democrats for what they really are. That born alive baby bill, there's nothing really substantially different from that position than from the previous abortion positions that Democrats have taken because, you know, a baby in the womb has just as much of the image of God as a baby outside of the womb. But I think for a lot of people that that the opposition to that bill was really sort of a straw that broke the, their back. I mean, it, it, there's no there is no conceivable debate. This is a human being that we're talking about once that baby's born. And, and these Democrats are not willing to 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 say no, murder is is not okay in that circumstance. They're just not. And I think that that really has has pushed a lot of people to see this really for what it is. And I think that I'm not saying I'm not saying that people are just now seeing it. I think they've they've always said, you know, abortions murder and things like that, but they're they're starting to really feel it in their bones. And and and, and I'm definitely one of those people. I put myself in that category. And so I, I just think that we're coming to a place right now where where we are going to have to start taking a stand. You cannot support a party that is so in so in rebellion to God that that they are willing to to promote and and incentivize and and pay for and force you to pay for people killing their own children, killing image bearers of God. A a any any Christian who dares support a party that's that's a primary plank in their party platform will be, I mean, ought to be excommunicated. I think that I, I just don't see any other way. There's no way to support that level of wickedness and still have the right to call yourself a Christian. And I think more and more passages are starting to see this. I saw Tom Buck. Uh, this is a great tweet. I, I, I urge you to retweet this if you can. It's got 50 retweets right now. It needs to have 50,000 retweets. He says, I fully support the Southern Baptist Convention confronting churches that will willfully ignore and give cover to those who sexually abuse children, period. I do too. There's no, re there is no way that any kind of person who calls himself a Christian ought to, ought to ignore or give cover to people who abuse children. I completely agree with that. I don't think very few people would disagree with that. He goes on, we should also confront churches that willfully ignore and or give cover for any support of a politician who stands for murdering children. Again, this is not just some side issue here. This is not just some 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 issue that yeah, a few Democrats support it, a few don't. Think, no, no, this is a central part of their party platform. They think that killing your kid is a fundamental right of humanity. They are sick, absolutely sick. There's no redeeming quality of the Democratic Party, none, nothing that could counterbalance they're absolutely, absolutely ridiculous promotion of killing children. Okay, so so he's exactly right. If we're gonna if we're gonna take the hard stance on abuse, we need to take the hard stance on murder. Because what does God care about? What does God care about? I mean, are you telling me that he cares more about sexual abuse than he does about murder? I say he cares just as much about both because both deserve the death penalty according to his law. In fact, he says that rape is as if you had killed somebody, and so therefore you get the death penalty. So what are we saying if we're going to say, nope, murder's not as bad, we won't confront people who support that, but we will confront people who support rape or, or, or who, who promote rape? Obviously, Tom Buck is on the right track here. I saw a great article here. For Moorhorn Media, no union with Democrats. No union with Democrats. From Tim Bailey, it says, it's time to face the truth. The Democrats are in open warfare against our Constitution, executive branch of government, their fellow citizens, the rule of law, and God. Straight up. Absolutely correct. The Democratic Party is the enemy of the church. They say so. I mean, I mean, this is not this is not something that that uh, that is that is, is we're just making up. They absolutely are coming for religious folk like you and me. We are the enemy. They know that we are their enemy. They they are open about it. It's time for us to recognize that we are in a battle and to recognize that they hate our guts. They hate our Lord, and they will do absolutely everything they can to erase our Lord's image from the earth. That's why killing babies is such a central plank to their party 
because they are demonic. They want to erase the image of God from the face of the earth. That's why they promote unions that cannot produce children, because they want to erase the image of God of the face of the earth. That's why, that, I mean, this is God's first commandment, be fruitful and multiply. God's first commandment. And these people are saying, fundamentally, no, you cannot tell us what to do. We hate you, and we hate your image, and therefore we will do everything we can to erase your image from the face of the earth. Okay? That's what the Democratic Party stands for. It is just that simple. Now, people might say to me, well, so what are you saying? We vote Republican? What are you, a Republican? You must be a Republican. And, and here's the reality. I'm not a Republican. I don't align myself with the Republican Party because I think there are some foundational fundamental issues with, um, with Republican ideology. Okay, so there you go. I don't know if I can get much more clear than that. But let's just face the facts. There is no moral equivalent between the Republican and the Democratic Party. There is no moral equivalence between the Republican and the Democratic Party. Because what, what do you get? I mean, Tom Buck actually tweeted this. You know, name one thing that, 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 that are, it, it, you know, it, it, it counterbalances this, this abortion thing, right? And, and most people will say, well, they care for the poor more, you know, because, you know, it's, it's not Christian to say that God can't tell you what to do with your money. And that's actually true. It's not Christian to say that God cannot tell you what to do with your money. That's actually a true statement. But let, let's look at the Republican Party platform for a second. Is there anything in that platform that says, screw poor people, we don't. We, in fact, we're against anyone giving to poor people. We want to destroy poor people. So forget that. In fact, we want to make it illegal that you can give to poor people. Is there anything in the Republican Party platform like that? No, there isn't. All there is is a, a is 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 look. Republicans have uh, have a lot of of love for private property rights. You can do with your money legally what you please to do with your money. I mean, they don't even believe that completely, but that's the kind of the foundation, that's the principle. You can search the scriptures far and wide, but you're not going to find anything that says that, that your money legally, you actually can't do anything you want with it. In fact, uh, we have a right to some of it. You won't find anything like that. You'll find nothing that will contradict the idea that your money is actually your money and you have a legal right to do with it what you please, as long as it's legal, of course. You won't find anything to contradict that idea. Now, God has a claim on that money. God gave you that money, and God has a claim on that money, just like he has a claim on you, and God commands you to give to the poor. And so if you're a Christian and you're not giving to the poor, then you're in sin. But legally, there's nothing we can do to you. Legally, you can do whatever you want with your money, okay? That's what God's—that's not me talking. That's God's law. That's God's system, okay? So you cannot say to me that I have to give to this, this uh, cause or you have to give to this person or that person or things like that from a legal perspective. As my pastor, you can tell me, look, Adam, you are not being faithful to the command to give for the poor, and you need to start uh, obeying God in that area. You can do that as my pastor, but from the law perspective, you cannot. So there's no moral equivalency here. If you're a Republican and you say, I'm not giving to the poor, well, you're in sin and you need to repent of that sin. But there's nothing I can do to you legally. If you're a Democrat and you're killing children, there is something that we ought to do to you legally. Okay? There is no moral comparison here. You know, uh, John Harris in this, in this awesome video, if you haven't watched it yet, it's called Beware of Evangelical Inc.'s Third Way. It's a 30-minute video. I suggest you watch it. He talks about Tim Keller saying, well, well, you know, individualism is really the problem here, and there's blue individualism and red individualism, and the blue individualism says that, that uh, uh, God can, do, can tell me what to do except in, in this area, in sex. I can do whatever I want in sex. And then there's red individualism that says God can do anything he wants and tell me what to do except in one area with my money. And uh, so it's just really the, the, the individualism is the enemy, and, and that's that. No. No. There's no immoral equivalence there either. It sounds really good when Tim Keller is saying it with his scholarly uh, air about him, with his teacher air about him, but there's, nothing, there's no equivalence there either. Because in the scripture, we have very clear commandments of where the boundaries of sex are, where the boundaries, this is moral, this is immoral. It's very clear, it's specific. But when it comes to money, what we have is an affirmation of private property rights. What's yours is yours, and you decide what to do with it. And then we have a command to give, but there is no specific amount. There is no specific group. There is no, there's no specifics when it comes to that. And so if I'm giving to uh, some charities that are near and dear to my heart or, or specific people like that, and I'm giving a certain amount of my money, you can't come to me and say, well, you're not actually giving enough. You're not giving the certain percentage enough. That's how I know you're not being faithful. You can't do it because there's nothing like that in the Bible. On the other side of that, if you're having sex with a man and you're a man, it's very easy to go to the Bible and say, well, God doesn't allow that. God doesn't allow that. If you're having sex with 10 women, including your wife, you could, it's very easy to go to the Bible and say, God doesn't allow that. 
It's not the same when it comes to your money because the Bible affirms private property rights. And so this socialism that Tim Keller is promoting, let's just not mince words, he is promoting an evil economic system with this kind of stuff. That is against the scripture, absolutely against the scripture. Okay? I mean, it's just that simple. And so, 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 so there it is. That's what I have for you today. I just wanted to you know, mention that, look, this is so important. This is important. Because we cannot, you know, you know John, in, in this video, he, he makes this point. He says, look, you know, we like to applaud um, the, the work that Dr. King did. And, and I do, too. I, I, you know, I, I think Dr. King did a lot of work. Dr. Martin Luther King, he did a lot of good work. You know, I don't think he was a Christian, but I think he did a lot of good work. And it was very courageous what he did. You know, he stood against, he spoke truth to power. He stood against people that were doing wrong at a time when it cost him in order to do that. But see, that's the thing. We, that's what we need to do now. And that's what we need to do now now because it's it's real easy to stand against child molesters because everybody's doing that real easy but when are we going to take a stand and say you know what if you support this enemy party this enemy of the church this party that wants to erase god's image from the face of the earth and is promoting it and wants you to pay for it if you support this party you have no right to claim the name of christ get out of here stop what you're doing or get out of here we would do it with Nazis. Why aren't we doing it with, with a group and a party that is responsible for even more deaths than the Nazi party? Get some courage and let's start taking some stands that, would, that, that in the future they're going to say, wow, look at how courageous they were. Because right now, Evangelical Inc. is not doing that. They're taking all the easy stands and they're avoiding and want to have nuance with the hard ones. Look, babies are being slaughtered in our country. People are promoting it. Lots of people think it's A-OK. -okay, and it's probably happening right down the street from where you live. And it's time to start in, the, in our spheres of influence. I'm not telling you to do things that are outside of your sphere of influence. If you're a pastor, your sphere of influence is your flock. You need to start disciplining the people in your flock first.